good Saturday morning. Welcome to Sunrise with Pastor Hayton here. So good again today to spend a few minutes with you. You ever had those things that brought a lot of pain and really hurt bad? I remember back in uh, the early days of my life, boy, it's been a long time ago, we'd moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, left the little town in north central Kansas back in 1954. It was on my 11th birthday that we moved from Natoma, Kansas to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, we went into Tulsa there a little, from a little village of about 700 to a city that I really don't know what size it was, but it sure seemed awfully big to the Haytons because we'd been used to living in that little remote village. But anyway, we moved into a little parsonage to sit directly behind the church. It was about the size of a double car garage. And uh, believe it or not, there were seven in my family, two brothers, two sisters, my dad and mom, and myself, of course, uh, that moved into that little old tanky parsonage. And it really wasn't a very good setup. I've seen a lot of substandard housing furnished for preachers, but probably nothing ever more substandard than that in my experience. Uh, one of the drawbacks was not only where we just crammed in there, to where we didn't really hardly have room to lay down and sleep, but uh, on Sundays, they used the parsonage for Sunday school rooms. And it really didn't sit well with my mother that people came over and sat around the living room and spilled into the bedrooms and sat on the beds for Sunday school class. Just wasn't a real ideal setup. So after a year of that, my dad found a house for us to rent. And it was a nice home, just uh, maybe a mile or two from where uh, the church was. And we moved into... 1017 North New Haven. Well, we were further from the school. I was about to enter Grover Cleveland Junior High School that year, going into the seventh grade. And uh, you know the distance from our home on New Haven to uh, Grover Cleveland High School was a little bit more than you could comfortably walk. And Dad checked into the bus fares. This was back in the days when yeah, only the country kids had a bus ride to school. City kids got there the best way they could. So I remember Dad checking into the bus fares and for my brother Richard and I to uh, commute from our home to the junior high school. Uh, it was going to be, uh, I don't remember how much. How would this 11-year-old boy even be too concerned? 12 at the time. How would I even be too concerned about how much it was going to cost to get to school? But anyway, Dad did some figuring, and he decided that he could buy Richard and I brand new bicycles to ride to school, cheaper than what we could ride the bus for in a, in a school year's time. So for the very first time in my life, I had a brand new bicycle. I mean, it was a dandy. Those of you that remember the bicycles from the 50s, they were a far cry from the skinny little bicycles with the thin little tires that we see today. Well, it was a bicycle that had the big wide balloon tires, and it uh, had a tank, you know, in the middle there, and it was painted bright red. It had a headlight on the fender. I mean, it was a beautiful bike to me. I was so excited about having a new bicycle to ride to school. Well, what are you getting at? We're going to talk about something hurting, not making us happy. Well, the happiness didn't last for long. It was maybe the second day that I had that new bicycle that my dad was going to take off for somewhere. So he got in the old 52 Ford station wagon that we had, backed it out of the driveway and started down North New Haven. And I decided that I would try to keep up as long as what I could on my new bicycle. I really wanted to try out, see just how fast it could go. Well, I probably hadn't gotten a half block down the street chasing after my dad in his 52 Ford station wagon until I hit a chuck hole in the road and I mean I went flying over the handlebars. When I picked myself up and went back and looked at the bicycle where well, the front fender was all scratched, the headlight was nearly torn off, the handlebars were askew, I mean it looked a mess. And you talk about heart sick, I was one heart sick little boy. I remember pushing that bicycle, putting it into the garage. I felt so bad that I went in into my bedroom and actually laid down on the bed. Didn't feel like that I could just get up and face another thing that day. Let you in on a little secret. I even prayed and asked Jesus to remove those scratches off my new bicycle. Of course, he didn't do it. 
but I asked him to, and fortunately it didn't shake my faith too bad. I'm still trying to serve him here all these years later. But what I'm getting at is that, you know, my new bicycle brought a lot of pain. And things happen in our life that sometimes do bring a lot of pain and really stabs the heart. I mean, it really makes his heart sick. Now, since then, I've had a lot worse things happen than wrecking a bicycle. Believe me, I'm not going to get into all the things that I've had happen in my life that have made me heart sick. But I'm going to tell you, every time I got on that bicycle from then after, I saw those scratches, and it reminded me that I'd better slow down, be a little bit more careful with my bike. Every time I saw that headlamp leaning over to one side on the front fender, it reminded me that I'd better be careful that uh, things do happen when we become careless. And you know, I think sometimes the things that make us heart sick, those bad things that happen, they teach us a lesson. And maybe we've had things happen in our life that have brought such pain to our heart. And yet, because of that, we learn something. Perhaps we're more cautious. We're going to be careful about chasing a 52 Ford station wagon down the street. We're going to drive carefully and uh, try not to have any more accidents. So I think of the pain that I had that day, but like I say, those scratches stayed on there until the day that I got rid of that bicycle, however many years it was after that. But it was a constant reminder to be careful. And a lot of things that happen are of our own making because we are careless. So let's go out and be careful lest we have something that will remind us to be careful. Well, let's pray and ask God to help us to be careful today as we go down the pathway of life. Heavenly Father, we know that bad things happen, and through those bad things, often there's a lesson that we can learn. Lord, often there's a reminder of something that we need to do or something that we need to be. So if something bad happens today, Lord, may it serve as a reminder, may it serve as a warning. Whatever we can learn from those things that make us heart sick, Lord, may we just know that Thou art there to comfort us during those times and to help us to realize the lesson that can be learned. Go with us throughout this day. Prepare our hearts for the Lord's day tomorrow. In Christ's name, amen. Well, thanks again. We'll see you Monday on Sunrise with Pastor Hayton. Goodbye.